as you see the project's up and you have 21 days to do it I was waiting for the files to get done and the, and the structures to be done and things like that so we can start doing the project uh, the project is <clears throat> the project is done as follows I'm gonna bring it up and explain it to you exactly what it is we can start start doing it today uh, so we're gonna do that at the end of the class we're gonna do a little quiz uh, and that's gonna be what we're gonna do today okay so first I'm gonna explain what the workshop is uh, sorry what the uh, project is give you a little demonstration of what is the structure of a uh, text system menu driven application um, and then you're gonna start doing your project it's gonna take around uh, 15 minutes to go through it but let me tell you first what the, the project is so I'm gonna first pull the repository because I don't know if I have it in this computer or not I still see people ask questions and I'll try my best to answer and sending me all the source files on Microsoft Teams and add it to their message you have a repository push it into your repository send me the URL of the repository so I can fix it and give it back to you okay um, like that it's not gonna work out very nicely so so what are we gonna do um, let's uh, start with the project <clears throat> as you see it's five milestones okay the first three milestones are uh, mandatory things that you're supposed to do okay the last two milestones is the request of those that they said I don't have uh, my marks are low and I want to do something extra to gain some marks to be able to bring up my mark those last two milestones are optional you can do it no extra time for it you have to do you have to squeeze your time and and study more to be able to do it and they have to be defended which means when you do it I'll bring you on a meeting you have to explain what you have done okay so uh, you have to tell me how the things are developed and how how you came up with the conclusion how you developed it so every single piece of code you are writing for milestone four and five you have to defend it in person okay uh, with an interview with me okay uh, but up to three it's not like that it's your submission and I scrutinize your code and that's how it's going to be so unlike other things that you are only uh, commented on the more the, the work it, I commented on your code when you asked me to do so these you're gonna get feedback from me for everything that you give to me okay if you open any of the of the uh, milestones uh, readme file is part of your uh, part of your project so if you actually go to the to the project and you open up resource files and you click on readme it actually brings the this description of the thing at left side it's in the read MD you just bring it over here and you'll see what happens so this almost shows what is the workload of each project so the, the bars that you see shows how much work it's done so uh, the first one needs approximately seven days and I put seven days for uh, an average and lower student uh, a good student can finish it in two days okay so it's something like that if you put an approximately an hour an hour and a half of time two hour and a half three hours total can finish the first one that I say seven days so you can really do it it's not much for milestone up you create a mock-up application what is a mock-up application um, down to this point we are just writing very simple things that teaches you how syntax and stuff work a mock-up application is an application you're gonna learn later on in after semester three and four in system analysis is that when you want to design a system first you create a fake system that it just looks like it looks like that it works like uh, you you create an accounting system you say if you click over here it opens the account and shows all the balance and you show something but it's not really balanced just showing something so the user can see how it works so we create a mock-up application with the menu system you are going to design today uh, and continue at home uh, which essentially runs the uh, point of sale system so essentially this is what they do in a grocery store you go buy stuff they one by one the, they enter the SKU and puts them uh, prices together and at the end it prints the bill 
that's what it does. It's essentially a point of sale system. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, you start it with, uh, 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 with a menu system that we are, I'm going to tell you how, how to create it today, the standard text menu system. And then uh, you uh, select your options in the menu. Instead of actually doing that, you just print a message that this is supposed to be done now. <laughs> You are not doing it. So when we are going to uh, parts of the menu, it only explains what's going on. Everything explained over here in detail. And at any point in time that you see there is anything that's uh, a little bit difficult to understand and go through, I provided a pseudocode. A pseudocode is essentially, uh, 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 as we mentioned, it's just telling you how things are done in English, and you have to convert it. Uh, in, in C. It's not like a, a paragraph, but when we are writing it, I'm telling you exactly in which line what you have to do. <clears throat> Please, it's something that is extremely important. I created the links over here. When you click, you go to MS1. Please don't do that. Okay? The things that are at the beginning, you have to read. And I have, I didn't, I, I, I tried to put as much stress as I wanted on this, but it didn't go much, which means you need to read, OK? It's one of the things that we don't know usually uh, um, we don't do, uh, sadly, which is reading instructions. We want to just do it and be done with it. And because of that, we always do it wrong. Please read the instructions, OK? Read this. Actually, uh, it's such a, uh, uh, such a, known problem that one of the ships that actually that SpaceX's things lands on it, they actually name the ship just read the instructions. <laughs> That's the name of the ship that uh, the r rocket actually comes back and, and lands on it. So it's very important. Please read the instructions. You have to follow these things. Citing is important. Uh, <clears throat> the code that you're writing over here should be cited that it's yours and no one else's. And if uh, we, as we mentioned, again, because it's a project you need to know, uh, if you are stuck at some place and don't know how to do it, you can simply borrow the code from someone else. No problem. But you have to mention from whom you bought and which part of the borrowed and which part of the code is that. So you lose mark only for that. It's not cheating. It's like you're coming from customs. You're going to say, I have three bottles of tequila. OK? If you do that, you're fine. But if you just come and say, I don't have anything, they open it up, now you're a criminal. OK? So you have to, so, and that's in academic industry, uh, uh, society, that's a, a must. You have to cite the work of others. Don't claim it as, as your own. That's plagiarism. OK? So if at any parts, uh, and you cannot say the whole entire thing, I got it from John. OK, that's not citing. OK, that's giving me some. I'm, you're not, you're not going to be a cheater because you actually admitted to it, but you get zero for it. So if parts and pieces of the project you, didn't, you couldn't do it, you can ask someone else. Now, if you ask someone else and you learn how it's done, you set it aside and you do it yourself in your own way, and later on you can defend it, you're fine. That's the whole purpose of studying, right? All right, but, but if you just get it from someone and give it to me or go to Discord or, I don't know, chat GPT and stuff like that and pick up your answer and give it to me, uh, then we're going to have a different discussion. Are we clear on all those? We're good? OK, now that all the threatening stuff are done, let's go through the project. So read all the things over here, where the due dates are. And, uh, the, the, so the mile. The, you, you, have, you have total three milestones, milestone one and two. They have their own percentages that, that you gain. So you get 20% for the first one, 20% for the second one, and 60% for the third one. So essentially, one and two are the engine of the application that you're writing, and three becomes the application itself. Uh, so three is the one that has the most marks. And milestone three essentially is divided into five submissions. And each submission of those gets 12%, which means if you submit milestone one and milestone two and only one of the submissions of milestone three, you get 52% of the project. But your project is considered submittable. 
Okay? If you do not submit milestone one or two, no matter how good you do the last one, it's not acceptable. The first two unit tests must pass. After those two are passed, you can only submit one of two of these and you get 64%. Uh, and it keeps going like that. So, and, and as you accumulate, you get up to 100. If you do milestone four and five and successfully pass the interview, you get 10% extra for each of those. That is extra marks if you want to have. So if you want to do more work to gain more marks, that's for you to grab. Okay? Uh, questions down to this point? Suggestions? Objections? We're good? Okay. Citation. I put over here a kind of a sample of what the citation is. When you're adding, you add that at the top of every file that you submit, and you write all those things in there. You can just copy this and fill in the blanks. Uh, and then you're going to actually write over here this statement that is extremely important. You actually have to write over there that this is done only by me and no one else helped me, or you write it, whatever it is. Okay. We know that. Compiling and testing your program, you know how it is, but I mentioned it again. And now we're coming to the point of sale system. So a uh, point of sale system essentially is any place that you go, you buy stuff, it's, they sell you things, and uh, that's what we are going to have. And we start our project by creating series of defined statements to set what the uh, uh, specific values that we want to have in our system. You know how defined statements work, so you're going to define the tax to 13%, which is essentially going to be applied to any taxable good, any good, so milk, no tax. But uh, chips, potato chips, it gets taxed. You know that, right? So essential stuff they don't tax. So the, the one that they do, you got to add 13% to it. Uh, what is the uh, uh, maximum length of SKU? Uh, that's right over there. So uh, if it's more than six, then your SKU is invalid. You have to say, well, you know what SKU is, right? Uh, I, don't, I, forget, I keep forgetting the abbreviation for it. Stock keeping uni unit or something? Stock. Something like that. So anyway, it's a number unique to the items that you sell in a store. Each item ha has its own SKU, and when you beep, it's reading the SKU. Uh, max stock number. So uh, what is the maximum number of items we can have for something in the store? It's not more than 999. That gives you the message that when you're printing the quantity, your quantity is supposed to be get printed in three spaces. OK? Maximum number of items total number of items that we can have is, so this means you can have a, a, a thousand um, dental floss bags. This one shows dental floss, milk, uh, eggs, potatoes. The total is not more than 500, okay? The total items that you have. And how many maximum item of bills are? That's a usually limitless in a regular POS, but we are kindergarten version. That's why we make maximum make it maximum of ten. So a person who comes to the cashier cannot buy more than ten items. We'll assume that way. Um, in in OP two four four, you're going to learn how to make that limitless. Okay, through something called dynamic memory allocation. We don't have that. We need a specified number uh, array size, and that's what we are doing. So we have a POS UI that uh, that's a module that we create, and that module has the user interface of our of our uh, of our uh, system. And uh, obviously, we're going to use the utils module that we developed throughout the semester. So you can use the utils module with all the things that it has. You may have to modify its functions to work exactly like this one, but most of them would work the exact same way. And utils module is provided. You have it in here. I just copied it and put it in here. So you have the utils module. You can reuse the code that you have over there. The features of the point of sale is in the inventory to see to see how much goods you have and how many, what are the numbers. To add item, to add item to the uh, stock. To remove item, uh, sorry, to add item, to remove item. Uh, to stock item, which essentially means you have the item and you want to add to its numbers, uh, and point of sale is the one that is uh, happening at the cashier. So this is the five is the heart of the system, and those four are actually keeping up with the items that you have in a store. Okay? So first one, 
shows it's a list of everything that you have. Second one, to add something new. The uh, third one is something that is discontinued. You want to remove it. You're not selling it anymore. And four is when you are sold out and you buy more of some kind of an item you want to add to its quantity. And five is selling it one by one. So two functions you're going to have to POS user interface. One function is called menu. What menu does, it shows the menu that user sees. Okay, So it's a series of print statements and a prompt at the end. Then you receive an integer to the number of items that you have in your options. And user must enter values that is valid, which means if, as you see, it says the center store inventory add item, remove item stock, POS and exit program. So the options user can use is from 0 to 5, correct? If it enters minus 1, that's an error message. If, it, if, if they enter 6, that's an error message. But if they select any of these things, then it goes and tries. So as you see, if, if I enter minus 1, it says invalid integer, try again. Uh, and uh, So if I press A, it says invalid integer because A is not an integer. Try again. If they enter the value out of the boundary, minus 1, it says 0, selection 5. So it shows what the selection is, the correct value. It says retry. And it keeps doing it until a proper value is entered and it comes out. We, you have already the, uh, you, we have already done the logic in the uh, utils.h, so we are using our code over there. Mockup functions. You create functions that are supposed to do your work. So you create functions for every single item that you have. So these are the mockup functions that we have. And some of the engine things that we have in the program, things that happen behind the scene and the user doesn't see. So that's when uh, the inventory is the, uh, the inventory is the one that user selects when one happens. Add item is when user selects add item. Three is when they remove item, four is when they stock, and five when they do POS. So these are the functions that is running when the user is working with it. But when the program starts, it has to load all the data inside the store into the program. The number of things there are, they're all in a file. It receives it from the file and brings it to the program. That's load items, and we give it a file name so we know which file is our data file. After everything is done, when user actually selects exit, because now you're changing, you're selling, you're buying, you're adding, so the data is changing in your program. After that is done, the session is done, you're going home at the end. When you're doing that, you press zero and it's exit, it goes out. When it exits, before exiting, it saves items all back and overwrites the old items. So tomorrow morning when you come back, you have everything updated as last day, and you continue doing that. So that becomes the point of sale. These markup functions for milestone one just print messages. Okay? So we're going to have a standard uh, message that you're going to create, message and thing like display action, I think I call it, or something. And you keep calling that to just show what action is going to happen when I develop it. And then we're going to go to the next stage. Are we okay down at this point? And then the submission is like this. These are the files that you're submitting. So one is the header file that you have all the POS header file with all the values that we have. Then uh, the POS application is the application that is running. The user interface has its own two functions in there. So that's one. And utils module is the utils module you're using. And at the end, we have main.c that runs the whole thing. OK? So uh, it's just organized in several different files, and you know exactly how they work. And the data entry over here shows what data you have to enter to test your system at submission. So these are the, the test values that you're entering in a first milestone. So I can validate that your first milestone is a pass. You can continue to the next stage of the, of the application. You can see what the correct output is. Oh, let me see. Submission process. It shows exactly what it is. Please read these things. It's important. Many of you don't know submitted programs option. 
put a dash to at the end. It tells you what, did, what the due date of the submission is. If your output doesn't exactly match and you have a spaces and stuff like that that you cannot fix, you can simply say skip spaces. It skips that one, so it doesn't give you a, obviously, you're going to lose 5 or 10% because your output is in a, not an exact match, but still you can submit it. If you have extra lines and you cannot fix it for some reason, extra lines are being printed, you can do that one. And dash feedback runs it without submission to make sure it works, okay? Especially, it's not published yet. I think you can start submitting it after the 28th. You want to start working on it right now? Do dash feedback at the end, so it just runs it and makes sure everything is OK and it's ready to be submitted. If you click on correct output, it is already in the project file. So if you look at it, correct output is there. Obviously, main is there. Everything is there. Things that you have to do it yourself, there is nothing in it. Okay, so if you click on correct output, this is the output of the program. The correct output is after you execute the whole thing. Okay, and uh, the main that runs it is a pretty simple and straightforward thing. That's the main. Okay, so what the main does, it makes sure that your, your defined statements are set properly. If the defined statements don't have proper value, they, it tells you that you didn't do. So this type of a thing is called the unit test, which essentially tests your program for the things it needs to see if it works or not, so you can go to the next phase of development. And that's what we're going to do. So it checks those things, simple print messages to see if everything is set properly. And at the end, it says, run point of sale. And this is my data file. You're not opening any file. Nothing is happening in here. It just receives it, and the execution of the program simply prints messages. So when your program is running, OK? So in here, it's going to say the value is correct. And then you see it says loading items with four uh, arrows over here. That's the function that is being called. So this is just a print statement or a function that you call. You can, you're going to reuse this for the next thing. It just prints loading, loading, lo, uh, loading items. Then the menu is displayed, and it goes through it. If the proper thing is selected, like inventory over here, it says, Inventory, so it says that is being run. This one says adding items. Just print messages inside the functions so it becomes a mock-up. After you do this, you have the skeleton of your program. Then you can go one by one, develop pieces, and test that one and go forward so you can do everything uh, properly. Questions down to this point? Suggestions? All right. Next thing. What is the standard way of developing? I'm going to close this thing because that was the project, and it's milestone one. Next week, we're going to talk about milestone two and three. Okay? Now, I want you to just start with this. So, How do we create a menu-driven system? A menu-driven system works like this. You have a loop that ends when the user says, I want to go out. Usually, this is how I code it. So when I actually want to write a program like this, that something is happening over and over, and it's going to stop, and I still don't know what is the condition of getting out, the best way to do is procrastinate, which means you're going to create a flag, and I usually do it like this because it makes sense. I'm going to create a flag, int done, and I'm going to set it to zero. It means I'm not done, right? 
So when done is true, it means I'm done. <laughs> as easy as that. Then to just be English. So I, I'm going to write it in a way that it looks like a pseudocode. So I'm going to say while not done to my system. That's it. So whenever I think program is over, I simply set the done to one and I'm gone. I don't have to think about when I'm done, this has to be done, and that, or this, and you don't need to do this. You set your condition, and when the loop goes back, you do it like that. One of the biggest crimes that you can do at this stage of programming is to have more than one return statement in a function. Remember that. A function by default has one, uh, a proper function has one point of entry, which is its name when you're calling it, and one point of exit, which is one return statement at the end. Okay? Everything else should be done through conditions. Just a review of whatever we talked about throughout the semester. So, while not done, what I do over here is display menu. See, I'm literally writing a pseudocode, a wish list. Okay? And when I display the menu, after I display the menu, I get the selection, get the, get user selection. Right? Now, get user selection should return the selection to me. Right? As you see, it's just a wish list. There are no function called display menu. There is no function called get user selection. I'm just writing it for the heck of it. And then I'm going to complete it as I go through. Now the selection is done. I have to do different tasks based on the selection of the user. So those selections can be known values. They cannot be between this and that. It's going to be single numbers. To decision making, the structure for decision making, to select one of many is A. What do we use to select one thing out of many? Switch. Switch is a, select, is, a, is a thing that we do. So all I need to do over here is to say switch to selection, right? And the default, which is not, none of the selection that is valid, is done is equal to 1, right? They say anytime you are getting to some place, first of all, Look where you can escape from. <laughs> That's what you do in a function. The very first thing you do, you see, how can I get out of here? And that's our way out. So our user selection, if it returns whatever the value is for exiting, I'll do that. I'll get out. So I'm going to create my display menu, whatever it is. I'm going to create the function for it. So void display menu. By the way, yours is not like that. Your menu does the display and the selection. So your menu does two things. I have two separate functions for it. Your design is different with this. But the whole structure is essentially the same. Are we OK? Am I going too fast? Are we good? So void display void. I'm not doing anything over there. And in here, I'm going to say printf. Uh, I don't know. I can go over here. A, actually, I'm going to change my selection to a character over here. Character selection, something like that. Switch selection and default is it. So I'm, my menu runs for alphabet, not with numbers. It doesn't make any difference. Whatever you do, that's fine. OK? So, so I'm going to say A is, uh, A, I'm going to write over here, um, uh, pa -pa -pa -pa, what should I say? Option. One, and I go to new line, and I'm going to have a few options over here. You know what? When you write series of series of series of stat, uh, uh, literal strings back to back, when you put series of literal strings back to back, the compiler puts them together, right? So A, B, C, and in here I'm going to call it X. So X is going to be Exit. They write it like this. So X is for exit, something like that. I'm just coming up with things. 
and then I'm going to show uh, uh, a prompt, and I'm going to give it a space and wait for the user to actually print it. So, A, B, C, sorry. So that's my menu. And to test it to see if it works or not, I'm going to say done is equal to 1, so it stops. I don't want it to. And in here, I'm going to say printf goodbye. I just want to print my menu, see how it looks like. I'm, ju I'm just going to call display menu over here. Oh, display menu. To see what it looks like, I'm just testing it. This is never going to happen because done is true. So it, it stops, nothing happens in here. It just says goodbye and prints the display menu. So when I print it, oh, I get an error. Let's see what is the error. Oh, get user selection is undefined. I haven't done that, so let's do that. A mock-up for that one. I don't know what is this. Okay, get user. So in here, I'm going to say uh, character get user selection void. And I'm not going to put anything. I'm just going to say over here return uh, x. That's what we call a, that's what we call a prototype. It's just some empty thing, and I'm going to fit it later on. So it doesn't do anything. Run it again. It says option one, option two, exit and goodbye. So it looks like an okay thing to me. Uh, that's my menu. Now I'm going to do get user selection. So get user selection, what does it do? It receives one character, right? And returns the value. So <clears throat> I'm going to receive one character. And I know because of the buffered entry, when you enter, you get one character. Definitely there is one backslash and remains in keyboard or more, right? Yeah, and I'm not going to make it foolproof. That's your responsibility. So in here, I'm just going to say uh, ch character, uh, the return thing is equal to uh, get char, that single character. And after this, I'm going to include my utils. My utils. And if I recall correctly, in my utils, I had a flush key, right? Flush key, I'm going to flush the key and return whatever is being received. So there you go. Now I have a user selection. So that's going to return to me the selection, so it's fine. Now I can go back over here and make the done zero. Now, I made the switch the uh, statements default to be done. Instead of done, I'm going to change it to something else. Uh, I'm going to put over here diff many different cases. So I'm going to write over here case, and I'm going to put X, and I'm going to say this is exit, right? So done will be when actually they say X, and I'm going to say break. That's the thing. For default, I'm going to say printf invalid selection and go to new line. So I print an error message instead. So what's happening with this program of mine? First of all, I'm going to remove that display menu that I tested. Let's walk through it. And that's why you walk through. We know our display menu is good, so we, we forget about it. We come over here. Main starts, done, selection is zero. Right? These days, you do this in your mind mostly, but this is what I'm going to do. So you write over here, so I have main over there, right? And oh, actually, I write the main over here. OK. And I have over there done. And I have over here selection. These are the values I have. And I restart the thing. So it comes over there. It says uh, uh, selection done is uh, 0, selection is null. 
So done is zero and selection is zero. Okay? As you see, I'm putting it in integers. Select, selection is a character, right? Because it's a character, when I put zero, it means it's null. If I put zero like this, it means character zero. There are two different things. Remember that. Okay? So it says, while not done, not zero is true, correct? So while comes in, displays the menu, the menu is displayed. Oh. So the menu is displayed, and it goes with a bar, and uh, 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 the cursor stands over there. Then it says, get selection goes to get selection, it gets selection, I have a ret. If you want to walk through this properly at any function call, you create a new function call over here and you call this get selection. And in get selection, you have a character ret and you walk through this. It's not a complicated one, so I'm doing it like this. But when it becomes complicated, that's what you do. For each function call, you have its own walkthrough. So it comes over here, get selection doesn't receive anything, comes over here, ret becomes get care. Let's say user enters over here A and hits enter. When A is entered, what happens? Ret becomes A, correct? Then comes over there, flushes the keyboard, so everything else that I have, they all gonna be gone. The keyboard buffer is emptied, and ret over there at the end is returned. As soon as that happens, you do like this, and you see what is returned. It's ret. So you've got to put A over here. That means the function ended, and what is returned with the function is A. That A goes back to selection. Selection becomes A. Are we okay with this? Now we have the selection, we switch to A. Is there anything capturing A here? No, so default happens. What is in default? It's going to say invalid selection. Right? And goes to new line. Right? And goes back up, comes down to the loop, goes back up. Done is still zero. It comes back to display menu and displays the menu again. Right? Are we good? Get selection is called. User this time enters X and hits enter. It comes back, returns the X out. X comes over here. Selection becomes X. Case X, done becomes 1. Done becomes 1. Jumps out to the switch, out of the switch, goes back up. Not 1 is 0. Comes down over here, prints goodbye. And goes out. So that becomes walking through this. Usually you do that in your mind, especially when you're working at home. You do it, you don't do walkthroughs like this on a simple, you just run it to see if it works or not, or you just press F10 and it walks through for you, right? But when you have a big thing and that thing doesn't, the, the, the walking through doesn't work, this manual thing works, okay? So if I run the program, hopefully that's what I'm gonna get. So that's what I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put T, it's gonna say invalid se selection. Three, invalid selection, I put X, capital X, still invalid selection. Capital and lowercase are two different things. Now, lowercase x, it says goodbye and goes out. Okay? So it's getting somewhere. Now, because I want both lowercase x and uppercase x to get accepted for that, I need to write the case for both. Okay? If you don't write a break after a case, what happens? It continues execution, right? So if you have two values, you can simply say over here, case, capital X, and don't put anything. So both these cases will do this. 
Now if I run it, I'll see that uppercase X is accepted as exit 2. Right? Now I can write other cases over here. So my menu shows A, B, C, so I'll start with A. I'm going to go case A and case uppercase A and break. Now in here I'm going to say printf A is uh, 1 is selected. Right? And I go to new line and you run this program. Now if I enter something that is not valid like that, if I press A, it's going to say 1 is selected, but I didn't set the done to 1. The program is not finished. Just what happens in 1 happened. So whatever I put, whatever I put at line 26, that's going to happen when option 1 is selected. Put a function over there that does millions of things, and that's going to happen when you're doing it. And therefore, that runs your program over and over. Okay? And that's a standard menu selection. Now, if I actually go over here, X, it says exit and comes out. And this is a universal way of creating a menu-driven console application. And it's been like that forever. And you will see that later on, even when you go to a graphical user interface, it is still the same. Your application is an endless loop to do things over and over until user says exit and comes out. Everything works that way. Are we good? Yes. Huh? Yes, of course. Yes. Yes. It's actually very easy when you think, how can we, how can we turn something to lowercase? Anybody? Very easy. Yeah, but it's, there's a very easy way to do it. Not calling too lower function, okay? No, too low. There is a, in a C, I think it's a C type header for our standard library. I have one of these two. Standard library that too lower is actually a function. It converts to lowercase. Okay? But A to Z, lowercase, has an ASCII code, right? A to Z, uppercase, has an ASCII code, correct? So lowercase a minus uppercase a is the same thing as lowercase t minus uppercase t, correct? Find that value, add it, it's going to become uppercase if it's lowercase, reduce the value, it becomes, <laughs> you just find the difference between the ASCII code of the two and apply it, and it turns to lowercase. But you don't need to, don't waste your time, just, this is extremely fast. What you're doing is a process. This one is just a jump to a place in memory and continue execution. This is much faster. So again, as I mentioned, when you are doing programming, don't be a hero. Try to make things as efficient and quick as possible. After you're done, stand back, see what you can make more efficient, and change. That was a good question. Any questions? Suggestions? That's your milestone one. You can start doing it now, and I'm going to come to you. You're going to have something to do on your computer, right? OK. All right. So pull the repository, the, uh, open up milestone number one, start coding your uh, menu one. My friend and I over here are helping you to, uh, maybe you can finish it by the end of the thing. And we're going to have a quiz too, by the way, which is just